that you would want to advocate for it. Now, so you have, again, core symptoms. It's a mood disorder. So you notice with the mood disorders, the core symptoms are always mood related. So the core for hypomania is elevated mood or irritable mood for a period of about four days. All right? And then we add at least three more symptoms before we can actually make the diagnosis of hypomania. So a total of four is required for a diagnosis of hypomania. Now, this has to lead to some interference with personal functioning in daily living. Now, when my new was won the trouble, I went more than four days but I was feeling very cool. I was feeling chubby. But it didn't affect my daily living. And therefore, I could not have been diagnosed <laughs> with hypomania. Ache, ache, mukai. That's plenty time. Ache, ache, ache. It's before the depression. Now, here's the important point that we need to note. That the parent is not a significant enough to impair social and occupational function, require admission, or result in psychotic symptoms. That's the major difference between hypomania and mania. There's a difference in the person's mood, there's a difference in the person's behavior, but it is sort of still within the normal realms. It's just unusual for that individual. So the quietish guy you have in the office, all of a sudden now he's coming in, he's saying hello to everybody, he's smiling, you know, all the time. It's not unusual for somebody else, it's just unusual for that particular individual. Now you have increased activity of physical restlessness, increased talkativeness. So they are, they are more active than they would usually be, they talk more than they would usually talk and difficulty in concentration or distractibility. Again, they don't have such bad difficulty in concentration that they will fail whatever they are doing, but their performance will go down just as a little bit. <laughs> Decreased need for sleep. Good. This is an important symptom for us to differentiate um, the symptoms in depression and schizophrenia from mania or hypomania. In depression or schizophrenia, you have insomnia. You sleep very few hours, and then you wake up tired. You wake up wanting more sleep. In mania and hypomania, you are feeling energetic all the time. So you don't need to sleep as much. You sleep two to three hours, and you wake up feeling more rested than the person who slept six to eight hours. So if you ask the person, are you sleeping well? The answer is yes. Are you sleeping enough? The answer is Yes. The only way to truly elicit this symptom is for there to be a relative telling you that he's not sleeping a reasonable amount, or for you to objectively ask the person when you go to bed, when you wake up. Okay? But as for them feeling that their sleep is not enough, they won't tell you that. Because they have a decreased need for sleep rather than insomnia. Increased sexual energy. So this quiet guy that would not, on a normal exercise not talk to anybody, he's smiling, smiling. Now he's happy, he's talking to people he wouldn't normally talk to. And now when he meets the ladies in the office, he's touching their shoulders, rubbing their backs, eh? asking them what they are doing for, for, for lunch and for dinner. Eh? Asking them whether their husband is taking care of them properly or they need some small assistance. You know? There's increased sexual energy, mild spending sprees, or other types of reckless or irresponsible behavior. So mild spending sprees. Your salary is 6,000, and then you go and blow about 1,000 CDs buying yourself um, a new, I don't know, print out, or maybe just a new phone, not a one Phoenix phone be. <laughs> because your, your, your old phone got scratched and it doesn't pattern you anymore. You can afford it. You are not going to go back up. The kids are not going to spend yeah. anything and uh, not be able to go to school because you bought this phone. But it's highly unusual for you. As opposed to the manic person who goes straight to iPhone 10. And because his salary won't be able to afford the iPhone 10, you would then borrow money from somebody at 30% interest 
<laughs> to buy not only the iPhone 10 for himself, but another one for his wife. And because he doesn't want his girlfriend to be left out, another one for the girlfriend as well. <laughs> so you see the difference between the manic and the hypomanic person. They are both going on spending sprees. The hypomanic person will stop at a point in time. But the manic person will do more. Okay? And then increased sociability or over familiarity. So shy people that can't open their mouth will now start opening their mouth. Mm. I'm looking at some of the ladies' faces. I think that their minds are going back to some days when somebody all of a sudden came to talk to them like, ah, who's here besides? I go make them. Now, mania without psychotic symptoms. So the duration for mania is one week. So hypomania is four days, mania is one week. All right? The core symptoms, again, you have mood which is predominantly elevated, expansive, irritable. And definitely abnormal for the individual consent. So again, the mood is up or the person is irritable. Other symptoms. Again, we're dealing with three other symptoms if the mood is elevated. But if the mood is irritable, which is not as strong as strong as elevated, then you need four more symptoms. I hope I'm, that makes sense. Mania, you are supposed to feel happy. So if you are feeling happy, it's strong. That's all three symptoms you diagnose your mania. But if instead of feeling happy, you are feeling irritable, then you need to add four more symptoms so that we can be sure that it's actually a manic episode that we are dealing with. All right. Leading to severe inter interference with personal functioning and daily living. So there should be social problems, problems at home, problems with friends, or problems in the workplace, or problems in school. So social or personal function should be impaired. With the absence of psychotic symptoms. That's mania without psychosis. So the, the three, the, the symptoms again, you have increased activity of physical restlessness, increased thought activeness, now flight of ideas, or the subjective experience of thoughts racing. So it's not just talking fast anymore. The hypomanic person is just talking faster, but his thoughts are all linked together nicely. Now with mania, the thoughts, you have a flight of ideas, that, that you can change topic without finishing your, there's still a rush of thoughts in your mind. Lots of normal social inhibitions resulting in behavior which is inappropriate to their circumstances. So, the hypomanic person, he knows his level, just that normally he wouldn't open his mouth to talk to his level. The manic person is now the cleaner in the hospital who walk up to you and tell you, oh, sweetie, the Valentine's Day now, fam. <laughs> He has now crossed <laughs> that socially acceptable line. <laughs> All right? And then, and then decreased need for sleep again. Inflated self-esteem or grandiosity. So this one is not delusional yet. <laughs> but I'm feeling guy. <laughs> What's that? I'm feeling guy. <laughs> Distractibility of constant change in activity or plans. So here, with that flight by there's the rushing um, thoughts, their plans, they can't follow one thing in real life as well. So they are talking to you about one thing, you are doing one thing with them, something else happens somewhere else, and it just stops what you're doing immediately, starts following them. This one, you observe it when you take the history. You are talking, uh, one nurse gets up, and that's it, oh, the fellows trying to follow him to find out how far. The behavior which is foolhardy or reckless or whose risk the subject does not recognize. Example, spending sprees, foolish enterprises, or reckless driving. Mm -hmm. So I have one of my patients who is now broke because when her manic episode came, she thought that she had picked up on some move that was going to happen in the Francophone countries and imported large amounts of some products that are only consumed in Francophone countries. But 
she had a feeling that the quarter over the quarter over there is going to have a problem. She imported large amounts. And now she's well. The importer over there didn't have a problem. And nobody's going to travel all the way to Ghana to come and buy her items and then <laughs> carry it back to Cote d'Ivoire. Hmm? Foolish enterprises. Eh? We've already talked about the iPhones and then the reckless, the reckless driving. Eh? There was one of my clients who he was driving normally until he saw the police. Then he bowed. <laughs> so he started speeding. <laughs> <laughs> went on to, the, <laughs> on to the pavement in front of them, and then he wanted them to chase him. <laughs> he, had a, he had a police chase before they arrested him, and then we had to admit him. <laughs> there's, there's marked sexual energy and sexual indiscretion. This one is marked. The last guy, he's just trying to see how bad he be, I know be. This is the one that is now going to circle. We need be our first circle. Okay, circle, so we need back on offer. Offer me no anamiesa. Offer me no anamiesa, so I'm going to use the condom. Eh? You see? You see, that is the reckless behavior. The man sexual, 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 sexual. So it's very dangerous. A lot of people have got venereal diseases from manic episodes. Something to show you one day. Like On a side note, manic episodes or bipolar women are the women whose spouses actually stay with them the longest. Depression, they leave them. Schizophrenia, they leave them. But bipolar they stay. Wow. Bipolar, when the woman is starting to settle, cry, the husband will come and visit, oh, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want her to settle completely. Now nah, you miss that window. They come and discharge my life to me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, mania with psychotic symptoms. So the, main, the episode meets the criteria for mania that we just discussed. Minus, we said that there shouldn't be any psychotic symptoms. Right now, there are psychotic symptoms. And the episode does not simultaneously meet the criteria for schizophrenia, to affect the disorder of manic time. So once you can diagnose schizophrenia, you shouldn't be diagnosing this uh, bipolar instead. Right. Now, delusions or hallucinations are present. Other than those listed as typically schizophrenic, which we discussed when we're talking about psychotic depression. So nobody who's eating the sun or nobody who's having dead party or these hallucinations. If it points to schizophrenia, then diagnose the schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. So the commonest example here are those with grandiose delusions. So here it can be of ability like we discussed, I'm better than Neymar. You know, of identity, I am the king of England. Just that I have really bit of so my skin is darker than it's supposed to be. I am the king of England. <coughs> you know? And then self-referential, so like we said, the TV, the TV is talking about you, or other people you see are talking about you. Again, we have a challenge here because sometimes they'll tell you that the pastor was talking about you directly, prepared the sermon just for you. And that is empty because you both <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And then erotic, <laughs> erotic delusions. So you believe you are uh, here, and then you believe that the second lady is in love with you. <laughs> and you know, Baumia, 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 what's it? <laughs> this is a heavy question. <laughs> <But> sure. <laughs> you can have your own illusion. <laughs> this is my example. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's, that's 
delusions of love. So declare, it's not that you love the second lady. She is in love with you. Now <laughs> <laughs> ah, you love her, then tell her you're delusion. And you come and But we have to do now. So this one, she loves you. Go to my and it's just his money that he's using to keep her away from you. But she loves you. Mm. We have one of these um, JJ's time. The lady actually got into the castle. But she was fair and very well put together. So she went there and she presented herself as JJ's girlfriend. And the guards did not want the stress of stopping JJ's girlfriend. <laughs> And they did not know how to call the house to confirm that there was a girlfriend coming. Because you don't know who's going to answer and then it's going to turn to a problem. <laughs> so they to the letter him. <laughs> so she got inside. <laughs> so somebody with the confidence that somebody who knew who the girlfriends were said they were going to come. <laughs> She has a own photo of my name if he wants. It's in clinical notes, official, official records. <laughs> anyway. Now, the other thing they also have, apart from these erotic and grandiose delusions, is persecuted delusions. Because as you all know, okay, you are doctors, but I don't know. More money, more problems. As you are becoming bigger and more important, there are people who want to pull you down. So apart from the, the, the delusions about them being important, they also have delusions about their enemies who are trying to bring them down because they are important. So it's not a persecuted delusion that not necessarily point to a depression or points to a schizophrenia. The people with mania can have them as well. Now, just to be clear again, you cannot have hypomania and admit somebody. I see it with, with the physician I start in my hospital sometimes. You diagnose hypomania and then you admit the best. It makes no sense. Yeah. Because obviously there's social and occupational dysfunction, there's disruption to the point at which you think an admission is necessary. It is clearly a manic episode. You cannot have psychotic symptoms and diagnose hypomania with psychosis. It has to be a manic episode with psychosis. So bipolar affective disorder is simply a mood disorder characterized by at least one manic or hypomanic episode. Okay, so the current diagnostic criteria, I think this one, this one, I'm actually going to the 11 because I know it's very cool. The current diagnostic criteria requires you to have at least two mood episodes, at least one of them which is a manic or hypomanic episode. I hope that's clear. You have two episodes, one is a manic episode or a hypomanic episode. You can have a depressive episode and a manic episode, or a manic episode and another manic episode, or a hypomanic episode and another manic episode. But as long as you have your first um, manic or manic episode and you are having episodes, we are calling it bipolar. So if you have one manic and the rest are all depression, it's still bipolar. Okay. But currently, the, the, the understanding is that there's no other condition in which you get manic or hypomanic episodes. So after your first manic episode, they are allowing you to diagnose bipolar disorder now. So that's going to be in the ICD-11. See, there's no confusion. <laughs> Personally, I find talking about the DSM unnecessarily confusing. The DSM is something that was, set, was done by North America, by the Americans. The ICD is the WHO's classification of diseases. No, the WHO, all of us. All of us. Yes, all of us, including the Americans sit down and come with a, cl up with a classification of diseases. Then America, because they think they're superior to everybody else, they go and sit on their own island and then develop their own DSM. 
It makes no sense to me. As far as I'm concerned, Ghana is a WHO country. So we have the WHO uh, classification. I don't know why, I don't see my, the, any justifiable reason for me to be using an American classification system when we are a WHO country. And most WHO psychiatry programs are based on the ICD-10. So if you are learning the DSM, you are now going to have to do unnecessary crossover things. It, it's just it's of no use to you, really. And see, I don't, I never teach with the, with the, with the DSM. And I don't practice with the DSM. And to be honest, even the American insurance billing is based on the ICD. You see, simplify your life. <laughs> okay. Oh, my thanks. Okay. Cyclothymia is the um, bipolar equivalent of dysthymia. So you still have the same two years, you still have the same um, episodes that don't quite meet the criteria for a manic or hypomanic episode, and then that's one for two years. And you call it cyclothymia. So you have episodes, some you have some episodes of, I can't get to be under drew hypomania, but then she didn't drew. <laughs> then it goes down to, I can't get to be under car depression. <laughs> then she didn't drew. <laughs> uh -huh. Then you have some small weeks in the middle where the person might be perfectly fine. And this, if this drags on for two years, then you diagnose, diagnose the cyclothymia. Okay, so for the management of a manic episode, in the acute phase, the current uh, thinking is that the first line agents to use is not a mood stabilizer, but a second generation antipsychotic. Olanzapine, steridone, depending on where you are, you might have access, access to cotyabine. Mm. These agents bring the manic episode down faster than the conventional mood stabilizers. So currently, it's the first line for somebody who is treatment naive. Very first manic episode, you start um, antipsychotics. That should bring the, the manic episode down. All right. If the person is already on a mood stabilizer, then you optimize that mood stabilizer. You increase the dosage of that mood stabilizer to bring the person back, because obviously that mood stabilizer works for that individual. But you can also consider introducing an atypical antipsychotic with the intention of withdrawing it once the manic episode is over. Does that make sense? This is specifically for specifically for mania. Specifically for mania. All right. Now, your other options. Lithium is very effective in bringing down manic episodes. The antipsychotics may work a little bit faster, but lithium is also very, very effective in bringing down manic episodes. Unfortunately, lithium has a very narrow therapeutic window, and um, regular testing is in regular uh, in serum testing is necessary. Now, in Accra, you can do your test at Ghana Standards Board and then rely on that to say that, yes, this is a reliable serum lithium level, so I can increase my dosage. I don't know what labs you have access to, where you are coming from, <laughs> whether they even pretend to be able to do a serum lithium or not. And if they pretend, whether you are going to trust them with your patient life, based on their serum lithium. So we tend <laughs> We tend not to use lithium here for that reason. The monitoring is going to be a challenge. Sodium valproate is actually very effective as well, particularly in people who have rapid cycling. That's um, three, more than three or more episodes of uh, mania or depression in one year. So their sickness comes fairly quickly. For those people, the what should I call it? The anticonvulsants, that's uh, sodium valproate and carbamazepine, might actually be more effective than lithium for those people. The issue we have with valproate is with its uh, teratogenicity. So we tend to avoid it in women in the fertile age group, which leaves us with carbamazepine. So you see a lot of people with bipolar disorder in Ghana being treated with carbamazepine. But it's also effective and it's safer for managing with the women in the fertile age group. Now with bipolar depression, we avoid antidepressants as much as possible. 
because there's a tendency of triggering episodes of mania, particularly with the TCAs, particularly with the emitritinine. So we try and avoid antidepressants as much as possible. So what you would initiate here is a mood stabilizer. And lithium is very good for mania, but with the depression, it's, it's a one word. Like it's not, it's not as superior in the area of depression. So you can just start with a mood stabilizer, like um, Valprate or um, Carmaspin. Actually, the person has predominantly um, depressive symptoms. Lamotrigine has been shown to be superior to all the rest. So the person tends to have more depressive episodes than manic episodes. You might want to consider Lamotrigine, depending, depending on availability and the person's pocket. Now, if the person is already on a mood stabilizer, then you optimize that treatment. So here we don't produce antipsychotics unless the person is actually psychotic. Okay. All right. This one I said, I said, thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, Dr. Bing. Questions. So we have about three minutes. Okay. Why did that the million episodes then come around? Um, he was asking why people, some people tend to have their manic episodes at the same time of the, of the year. Now it's not just mania, it's, it's all the illnesses. So all of the illnesses that I've discussed with you, including and schizophrenia, which I haven't discussed with you, are triggered by stress. <laughs> And to be clear, this is not just psychological stress. Also, physical stress can trigger it. So a bad episode of malaria or pneumonia can trigger a manic episode or a depressive episode. Now, some points of the year are more stressful than others. Some points of the year are more stressful than others for, the, for individuals, depending on what their life, state, uh, um, life is like. The challenge is when you have two episodes occurring around the same time of year, separated by maybe a year or two. Then the person starts to make a correlation between relapsing and that period in the year. So every time that period in the year is coming, the person starts to get nervous. The person starts to worry, I might go to have another episode this year. And that fear, that worry, that stress, that anxiety then triggers an episode. Then it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. Because now it has come three times. So then it's going to come four times. And then, yeah. So it takes a lot of psychotherapy. That's where these people earn, earn a lot of money. <laughs> And I think it's a good job versus 12 sessions. <laughs> so it takes, so when they break that psychological cycle, then they're able to, to get over it. Yeah. So it's not an uncommon thing, not just in media, but in all the conditions. Dr. Abin, permit me to take us back. When we're talking about depression, yes. you did mention that uh, with the pregnancy-related depressions, we usually use the DCT, which is gold standard. I want to know, is there any myth regarding the ECT? Yes, if there's no myth, why don't we uh, make it the uh, hmm. standard of treatment for all those with depression? Oh, ECT. ECT has suffered. There was this movie, One, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. And they depicted some very graphic images of ECT as conducted in the past. Even when they were conducted at the time the movie was made, it was unusually graphic. That's not what was going on. So now, in the consciousness of the West, ECG is viewed as some sort of barbaric um, thing. So it has affected their um, their practice. Yes. So they are moving away from ECT because their clients are viewing it as a barbaric thing. So they are looking for every other option other than ECT. So there are a lot of recommendations that go around ECT. But even then, when they come to critical, like what we are talking about right now, they will do the ACT. Unless there are certain centers which have decided that they will never do it. But even there, like even if you check the, the British uh, guidelines, ECT is there strongly. But these beliefs have persisted. But right now, even then, they, 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 just think, they anesthetize you. And then they, so they paralyze you. So don't, you don't even get the wild convulsions anymore. But they still have these beliefs persisting there. So it's a huge problem. But then, and now there's a huge problem for us 
Because Eja, we are begging. We are begging somebody, not even the production guy, they have the money to pay for it. We are begging somebody for money to be able to run our mental health sector. And the person we are begging doesn't have a scientific background. He's a what's my word, an A program manager. So she's he she is using the understanding that they have from their childhood about what ECT is. We have explained, 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 explained. They say, oh, no, they don't release money for to buy ECT machine. Yes, we are listening. I think the only people who are running ETTs right now is Polibu and uh, Agra side. The other two hospitals, we are now looking for money to buy one machine because it works very well. It works very, very well. And like with this, particularly with this pregnancy issue, there's no sense in keeping a mother away from a baby for a longer period just because you want to uh, stay. Satisfy your own sensibilities about not using ECT. You know, you could get this woman well in like two, three weeks, or you could spend two weeks waiting for your antidepressants to start working. It doesn't make any sense. But that's the situation that we are in. Unless maybe I understood. I misunderstood. Uh, if somebody has mania, yeah. one the person has a manic episode, without even uh, seeing any history of depression, the person who automatically has bipolar. That's, that's the understanding now. Okay. So is there a possibility that somebody could just be manic? Having Isolated mania, having, which is not bipolar. Having manic episodes. Just manic. No, one manic episode or several manic episodes. Several manic episodes. Okay, and still not be classified as bipolar. No. The only condition in which manic episodes occur is bipolar. So we have, we have people like that. We have no documented uh, episode of depression. No documented episode of depression. Only manic episodes. The diagnosis is still bipolar. Bipolar is the illness that is characterized by manic episodes. So you have unipolar depression, but no unipolar mania. That illness is bipolar depression. I mean bipolar, bipolar affective disorder. Thank you so much.